Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HBC. We're here at ISC 2015 in Frankfurt, Germany, and we're here at the Asatec booth with Steve Branton. Steve, how are you doing today? Good, nice to see you again. Nice to see you as well. Steve, I guess we, we're going to start at the beginning here with, you know, there's, I heard there's three things you want to tell us about today that's going on with liquid cooling from Asatec. Yeah, the first thing we're going to talk about is the increased availability through OEM partners. And then we want to talk a little bit about where we've deployed the system. And finally, we're going to talk a little bit about new technology. Okay. So let's, let's start with, with uh, where they're at. Yeah. So as you know, we've been partnered with Cray for some period of time. Yeah. Um, they've actually deployed a number of systems, which we'll talk about here in the next segment. Uh, we're cooling Xeon Phi's, regular Xeons, and um, SXM cards from NVIDIA. And um, this is now a product that's in its second generation with Cray. So moving along with deployments and, and increasing that relationship. And along those lines, I understand you got a new customer that's got some all new kind of products with Asatec. Yes, we do. That's Fujitsu. Yeah. And we announced that relationship some months ago. This is the coming out for that product. Okay, well, let's go take a look. Okay, Steve, uh, we heard something about Fujitsu. What are we looking at here? So this is the new system from Fujitsu. Uh, it's a CX400. And um, what we have here is a system that's got four nodes in it, four half, few, half with one U nodes. It can be either uh, dual CPU nodes or we can do um, K40 um, plus CPU uh, and or Xeon Phi accelerators in the processor. So um, we will be able to talk about a deployment of this system at supercomputing. So one of, the, one of the things that we're seeing coming in the market is new product from Intel uh, called Knight's Landing. Um, it has a much bigger package and higher wattage. So this is a Knight's Landing uh, system that we'll be shipping in August to OEMs who are in the process of designing systems for that processor. Um, then we are also uh, looking at the new IBM. It's actually released Power 8 chip. Yeah. Um, and this is a cooler for Power 8. Uh, one of the interesting things about the Power 8 system is that it's overclockable. So in its native state, this is a 260 watt processor. Um, they'll be able to overclock this to 400 watts, which is going to really require the first 400 time. watts for one. So that's going to need liquid. Is it? Yes, it yes. is. Yeah. Okay. And so that's really exciting as a, from an industry perspective as we're seeing higher wattage parts come out from both from Intel and from, from their competition, which we see as something that's going to drive the market, particularly at HPC, toward liquid cooling. Okay. Well, I wanted to ask you about some deployments. I heard some customers are upgrading some of your early customers. That's great news, isn't it? Yes, they are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So first, since the last time we talked, we've deployed our largest system, which is at Sandy. That's a 28-rack system. Um, that data center was constrained from a liquid cooling perspective, or from a cooling perspective. And so they were able to install liquid cooling and spend about half as much on cooling as they would have if they had expanded their air cooling system. So they were able to get more compute and more cycles um, by doing that. Similar story at MSU where they deployed a, a five rack cluster, again, uh, air cooled constrained data center. They were able to expand at a lower cost and buy more compute. They've actually added a second four rack cluster to that system. Uh, they're now number 145 on the top 500 list. And interestingly enough, they're seeing about 10% improvement in uh, speed with liquid cooling over what they would have seen with the air cooled system. So that, that was a, a pleasant surprise for us. And then uh, while we're here, NREL, which is our oldest deployment, is now begun to add additional small systems to their data center and they've uh, purchased additional liquid cooling systems for that data center. And that of course is the ESIF data center which is operating at a PUE of 1.06 and they're doing that by having it in all liquid cool data center. So we're supporting that infrastructure as we build out. And then finally here in Europe uh, we have a deployment at UIT, which is the University of Tromso in Norway, north of the Arctic Circle. They can throw away all the heat they want for free, but they have students that will get cold without heating. So they want to take that 
energy that they've used to run their compute and then reuse it to, to heat up their buildings. Um, so they get double duty out of all the carbon that they consume. And they've gone from a single rack cluster to a, a six rack cluster. It's a retrofit of uh, HP gear there. So. so so seeing this, you know, with repeat customers, your early adopters are coming back. Which, is it fair to say this is a mature technology coming from Ace Techno? Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, it's very exciting.